What's up YouTube? Brandon here with Beard Guy EDC. Back at you guys here with another video today. Uh, we're gonna do a little unboxing and sort of a review, kind of a first impressions of a uh, Spyderco here today. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the Spyderco right just yet. I'm gonna wait till I get into the actual unboxing portion of the video for that. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty unique one. It's not one you see every day. It's not certainly one that I've seen a lot. But uh, one of my close friends just acquired it, and uh, he told me I could have a loan of it for a video. So you guys are going to get a chance to see it today. But uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's jump in and look at this uh, pretty unique Spyderco, in my opinion. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Have a great day, and uh, take her easy. Okay, you guys. Today is going to be a first impressions and kind of an unboxing of a little bit of a unique Spyderco. Uh, one that you don't see every day, uh, certainly one that I haven't seen. Um, one of my uh, good buddies actually recently purchased this and uh, lent it to me to uh, shoot on the channel. I can't do much of a review because I haven't used the knife, but uh, I'll do a first impressions on it and a little bit of a comparison so you can uh, see the size and all that, uh, get a good feel of it. Without any further ado, I'll show you the spider code that we are talking about today. So the spider code in question is actually the Spyderco Valaton, or Valatin, however you pronounce it. Uh, it's designed by Butch Valatin, I believe his name is. Uh, he's an Italian designer. He designs mostly stilettos. But uh, yeah, he actually did this design for Spyderco. It's uh, pretty unique. It's not one that you see every day. It's uh, got some things that Spyderco doesn't usually have. Uh, without any further ado, let's jump in and I'll show you. So this is the box, the Spyderco box. Inside you have your, your Velatin sub hilt and a small note about the knife, which I'll get into shortly. But for now, I just want to show you guys this beautiful blade. So this is the Spyderco Velatin sub hilt. This thing is a beauty. It comes in S30V steel with polished G10 handles. Nice little pocket clip there. So this blade has ambidextrous thumb stud or thumb hole opening. So most spider codes don't actually have a thumb stud, but uh, this st thumb stud is actually also incorporated as a blade stop. So it latches in right here in these little cutouts and it'll actually stop the blade from over travel. So when you open it up, you hear that nice thwack. It sounds really nice when it locks in. Let's talk about uh, this blade for a second. There's a beautiful secondary grind on the tip there. Absolutely love it. Gorgeous. The S30V is everything I would expect. It's laser sharp. Even though this is a hefty chunk of S30V at about four millimeters thick, that is a hefty blade, very thick. But it's a very nice knife. It, it feels good in the hand, even though it's large. If you like a nice knife, it's not bad at all. Now, some people will argue that it's a bit large. I would say it is it's chunky, it's, it's thick, it's definitely thick in the hand, and the blade is definitely very thick. But for some people, thick blade stock isn't a bad thing. For some people, they use their knives a little bit harder, and a thick blade stock is a godsend, especially in S30V. It's gonna hold up to a lot of abuse, it's gonna sharpen up really nice to a laser's edge. Honestly, I can't say much bad about this knife besides the size, and if you like a big knife, that's not a con, that's a positive. The owner of this knife actually enjoys the size of it, doesn't find it too big at all, feels nice in the hand, cuts well. All in all, it's a beautiful piece. I can't really say many bad things about this knife. It's a very nice design. It feels great in the hand. The Polish G10, I thought it was gonna be slippery, but it actually has some grip. It's not bad, it actually has a bit of grip to it. You can spotty flick it, you can thumb it open with the thumb hole, and you can use the thumb stud. So there's multiple ways to deploy the blade. It's, I don't know, I just, I, it's gargantuan, yes, but it doesn't feel excessive. It, it, it feels right. It feels like it's meant to be. The design is a little bit overdone. It's over-engineered, but beautiful knife, beautiful knife. Made in Taiwan. Again, designed by Butch Velatin. So let's jump in and have a look at that letter there, guys. Let's see what this is all about. So 
So this is the, the letter here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll try and hold it still. And if you want to pause it and read it, you can go ahead and do that. But I thought it was a cool little touch to include a uh, little letter from the Spyderco crew to let you know about the knife and the design. Nice little touch. So I'm going to compare this knife to another knife that I have in my collection that I consider a large beefy folder. It's the Artisan Cutlery Osprey in uh, brass scales with a D2 blade. Nice chunk of D2 there. Again, about four millimeters thick. Nice thick blade stock. The D2 is a great steel, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't hold a candle to the S30V as far as edge retention goes and hardness. So let's see the size from the Osprey to the Velotin. The Osprey is about a, I think it's a 3.65 inch blade and the, uh, the Velotin is 3.75. So the Velotin's a little bit longer, but the Osprey makes up in uh, heft for sure. But it honestly makes this one a little bit more suitable for EDC. This, I can't remember the last time I actually carried and used. It's more of a novelty for me in my collection. I do use it now and again, but this seems a lot more practical. This Spyderco feels like something you could actually use and abuse. And I'm also going to do a comparison of a better known Spyderco to show you the size difference between this Spyderco Velatin Subhilt and the Spyderco Delica 4. So this is the Subhilt. Here we go. And the Delica 4. So obviously, it's a big knife. There's no, there's no denying it's a large folder. But it, it feels good. It doesn't feel like a huge knife. It does feel thick, but it feels sturdy. It feels solid. It feels like it's ready to cut. I love this knife. I'm very happy that my buddy got it so I could review this thing because I don't see enough reviews of this thing. It's, you don't see it a lot. It's a, it's a less talked about knife. I honestly didn't know it existed until, uh, until my friend found it and showed it to me, but uh, I've kind of fallen in love with it. I'm not enough to buy my own, but man, I really do like the grinds on that thing. Obviously, my friend is a lefty, has it set up for the left-handed pocket clip carry there. But yeah, that's my first thoughts on the Spyderco Velotin. Basically, it's a big blade, but if you're into that, it's, it's everything you're going to want. It's, it's a perfect big blade. Suitable for EDC, a little on the large side, but other than that, it's, it's a beautiful knife. The steel is great. The polished G10 feels great in the hands. The construction overall is just very well done on this knife. and I don't have much bad to say about it. And to end off the video, I will do a uh, quick pocket dump for you guys. Besides those few knives I had for comparison, what I'm actually carrying on me today and using today. So I have my CH Knives 3002 in D2. Pretty nice folder. I have my Civivi Hooligan in Damascus. Pretty nice knife. I have my Olight i3T EOS. And my Trayvac Summit wallet. And that's everything on me today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video of my first impressions on the Spyderco Velotin and a quick comparison to some other blades just to show the size of that beast. It is a gargantuan knife, but it is a beautiful one and it's designed very well. I gotta say, I love everything about that knife. I really hope you guys enjoyed the content. I'm gonna keep doing some more unboxings and reviews. Uh, lots more videos coming your guys' way. Have a great day and take care.